With a population of over 150 million citizens, publishing less than 3,000 books a year might seem to confirm the assumption that Nigerians do not enjoy reading. However, one man seeks to disprove this myth, and today we'll be meeting him to talk about his vision for a well-read Nigeria. His name is Okechuku Ophili, and his app Okada Books, at only four years old, has seen over 100,000 downloads, with 11,000 books to be read, all available in the palm of your hand. We caught up with him at Twenty Cents Gallery, and this was what he had to say. So my name is Okechuku Ophili. Um, I graduated from the University of Houston. I'm from Delta State. I'm a practicing mechanical engineer. I'm the founder of um, Okada Books. And I've, I've authored um, four books, uh, namely How Stupidity Saved My Life, How Laziness Saved My Life, How Intelligence Kills, and my latest, After the Girl with the Magic Bowl. The idea for Kata Books came about um, based on my frustration in the Nigerian book distribution um, industry. I'd written a book, How Stupidity Saved My Life. Um, it was a struggle to get it into bookstores. And even after I put it into bookstores, it was a struggle for me to get um, my money out after the book ha had sold. Um, I had up to like 1.5 million Naira um, worth of book sales and it was difficult to get the money. So much so I had to do a social media campaign, XYZ bookstore, hashtag, pay me my money. Eventually the bookstore called me into their office and paid me the money um, they owed me. And after that experience, I had a better way to do things, a, a simpler way um, to distribute books in Nigeria. And that's when I started thinking about putting books in mobile devices. If you put books in mobile devices, everybody has access to it. Um, it's easy to get it in there. Uh, you don't have to deal with storage costs, transportation costs, but most importantly, when your money is due, you have this ability of it, you see it immediately, you see it instantly, and you can collect your money immediately. So that's what we wanted to do with Okada Books, and it was really born out of my frustration with the Nigerian Book Distribution um, Network. Um, for us in, um, at Okada Books Limited, we believe that there is a traffic jam in publishing in Nigeria. Um, the traffic jam occurs when you try and publish a book, the tra traffic jam occurs when you try and distribute the book, the traffic jam occurs when you try and collect the money you've made from the books you've sold. And so for us, we see ourselves as that Okada bike that you see when you're in traffic. And Lagos traffic, but hardcore traffic that weaves through the roads or goes through um, different paths that the cars can pass through. And for us, we see ourselves, ourselves representing the authors, carrying authors through the traffic jams they face in publishing, distributing, and collecting their money. And our job is to act like Okada books, um, like Okadas, and get people from their destination from A to B as cheaply and fast as possible without getting them stuck in traffic. One billion dollars. <laughs> uh, success for um, Okada Books, kind of like what, what I said, Okada Books will know that we are successful when we start getting diversity in the books we read in Nigeria. Uh, for far too long, most of the books we see in bookstores are the Chinua Achebe, set in a village, Chimamanda Adichie, set in a village um, type books. And I think that we can write different types of books. Um, success would be having um, Nigerian science fiction books. Success would be having comics with Nigerian superheroes. Success would be someone like um, Musa Jai, who is our top um, seller on Okada books, who, who sells fruits in the northern part of Nigeria writes erotic novels and writes it in Alsa um, language. That is success um, to us um, because ordinarily someone like Musa Jai would never have been discovered under the normal publishing system in Nigeria because the publishers would just overlook him. Um, and for us, because of the way we are set up and because of our concern in finding that authentic story, we're able to find people like Musa Jai. So success would be finding more and more people um, like that and just changing the Nigerian story and telling the world that we have different types of books out there and not just the singular story we hear all the time. After our chat with Mr. Ophili, we decided to take it to the streets to find out what other stakeholders in the literary industry had to say about the app. My name is Adriel Loretta Eba. I'm a graduate of accounting from Caleb University, Lagos. I am an investment banker 
I'm a good blogger actually and I'm a freelance writer. I write for a couple of websites and things like that. Carabooks has been very useful. I have seen books that I would normally have not seen in bookstores. I've seen authors I've never come across, young authors, aspiring writers, and because of its cheap price, I would say it's easier to just pick a copy, read, and you know, it's very enlightening generally. Honestly, um, I'm quite old school, so I prefer paperbacks. However, because we are usually with our phones and laptops more often than we have time to read books, it's easier to read an e-book. It's easily accessible. Of course, the, the prices are way, they are way, they are way different. And as younger readers, as the new generation readers, they prefer to use their money to buy, you know, much more important stuff than books. So having it quite cheap makes it easier for you to get through to them. Um, one of the big challenges everybody faces is, um, of course, capital. Um, the usual hustle of working in Nigeria, you have a developer, there's no light, <laughs> or <laughs> there's no fuel, and um, just the difficulties, you, you go and see somebody and they tell you the manager is not here, come back and you do it two, three times, and it's just, it's just quite draining. Um, but with the challenges, we've had to get around them, you know, intelligently. Like before, we used to think we could get all these big publishers in Nigeria to convince them to put their books on. We kind of books, but we found out that a lot of those publishers are stuck in the way they were doing it in the past and they don't want to change. So instead of trying to force them to change or instead of trying to fight them to change, we decided to just focus on um, upcoming publishers, upcoming authors, um, the people that are blogging or writing all these beautiful series for free and convince them to put their books um, on kind of books. And that strategy has gotten us a lot of traction. We have 11,000 plus books on our platform. Uh, people have downloaded over 750,000 times books on the platform. Um, we have over 100,000 users, 100,000 unique um, downloads on the Android store. Um, we're working on an iOS app. So, you know. Try it as we may, booksellers and publishers won't grant us an audience, possibly because the Kata book poses an existential threat to their business. But we're able to get a book distributor to get a side of the story. My name is Akiala Odunuka. I'm a published author and a book manager. So I have um, written from Chap to Champion and um, The Legendary Warrior Mindset. The Nigerian uh, book scene is a very interesting one. I must say that um, from, I speak from experience, especially for most of us who grew up liking books. We had some very good bookstores in the past and um, we had thought it would continue like that. But growing up to, uh, and um, taking over working as a book manager and um, you know, having um, interaction with different bookstores, it has really not being the best, you know, not, I'm not trying to be pessimistic, but it's the reality right now. You expect that if you do business with a particular bookstore, you want to get your money back or you want at least as much information as possible from time to time. But you know, it's not, it's not that way. It's a bit frustrating right now in the industry. And um, I just think it could be much, much better. Yes, I, I, I believe ebooks, ebooks like the next, the next, the next forty, because or they're already here, and I think they can actually gather up steam. Considering the number of gadgets in the hands of Nigerians, in the hands of young Nigerians who are the very early adopters, and who are those who get to jump on new technology and new um, innovations quite quickly. So I believe that ebooks would actually do well in a place like Nigeria, where we have lots of gadgets everywhere, so ebooks could do well. And uh, I must add that it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the end of um, hard copies. It's just that we need to find a way of um, handling distribution better. They have to be more responsible and more responsive. 
I think because for in the Igbo region of Nigeria, there's a saying that before one makes medicine for the madman, it must first ask him if he is willing to be treated. In this case, the madman would be the writers. It only seemed right to ask the published writer what the emergence of such technology meant to him. Okechuko Ophili's dream to see a better red Nigeria is without a doubt already on its way to actualization. Um, my name is William Moore and I'm uh, a writer and author of um, the novel Lonely Roads. And um, yeah, it's pretty much it. I'm a thing that writes. Um, these not kind of books has been really good for me because uh, I have my, my novel is on it and also I have a collection of short stories on it. And like say for a novel, it's easier to get publishers for that. But for something like a collection of short stories, you know, you might need to be like a big name writer or, you know, uh, for, for someone to buy into uh, letting you publish that. But um, I've been able to have, I think, close to 200 downloads already on that. And um, this is like almost no marketing. So I think the platform is great. And I can imagine for upcoming writers, you know, like I'm wondering, you know, where, where are you, how would you get your work out there in its complete form? But much like mothers, an entrepreneur's work is never done. We we'll wait patiently for the launch of Okada Books on the iOS platform. The publishing industry in Nigeria is, um, <laughs> let's just say it's a lot worse than I imagined it would be. You know, it's, you know, one thing is getting published in the first place, you know, because they, they wouldn't, most houses wouldn't take books just because they are afraid it, you know, it um, wouldn't sell. And then if they do take it, then the distribution is a whole nother like kettle of fish. Then if you do get the distribution and actually getting your money back from the shops is like another battle. So um, the, the idea of kind of centralizing those things by using technology, I think is a great idea. Obviously, I, I would miss um, you know, the idea of people holding your book physically, but in our current, you know, climate it's, it's the least we can ask for is at least to be able to get our books out and um and get our our money money back obviously like I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of paper and all that but i i, I think i would accept the feat that ebook is, is here to stay it's easier to carry around it's cheaper to buy it just um it, it just makes more more sense really you know and, and i think with you know young people getting more technology savvy, the distribution problems, it's 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 a it's a, it's a no-brainer. I think ebooks are definitely going to carry carry the day. I I actually had the pleasure of meeting um, uh, Okijuko Fili. Uh, I think I met him at the uh, Farafina workshop um, event, and he was a brilliant guy brilliant guy and, and, I, and I think what, what he's doing kind of goes to show you know that and he, he's a, a, a writer as well who was having the same kind of like problem with distribution and stuff. I think with the kind of economy we have the, there is almost a pressure for everyone to be some sort of entrepreneur like you know you have to have something you're doing and you know young people kind of young people ironically can actually see the future because they almost live in it so you know I, I really think young people out there have almost like a duty and a responsibility to be the entrepreneurial spearhead you can't be waiting for you know like older people that don't really know where the future is going to kind of decide you know oh this is the business you want to go into innovation is in any, any country you go to innovation has always been a, a young people thing so For aspiring entrepreneurs, one thing I would say is keep it simple. Um, there's a book I read and I call it the Bible for Kata Books. It's written by Eric Rice. It's called The Lean Startup. And in that book, he, he talks about a, a concept called MVP, which is your minimum viable product. So as an entrepreneur, what you want to do is that if you have an idea and you think it's the best thing since sliced bread, um, is don't spend thousands or millions on the idea building it out what you should do is you should create an mvp minimum viable product um, that you can take to the market with little money and validate your idea and once your idea is validated then you can start pouring in money to scale it up but what a lot of people do is that they come up with an idea they don't test the idea they start renting out offices they start hiring staff and then 
they start working on it and by the time they spend so much money so much capital and they've grown grown so big that when they realize that their idea doesn't work they are so big that they cannot move or navigate out of it so my biggest advice to upcoming entrepreneurs is keep it simple stay humble create mvp products uh, mukata books where where we are right now we don't have an office you know um, and that's how simple um, we are if you aren't already on okada books as a slang saying goes you're on a bicycle <laughs>